Do you ever just nervously play with a gun? Today I don't really have anything to review, so I thought maybe we could- Hey, Bubba Cousin Fuck. Duke Nukem, why are you here? I already did a video on you. It's like one of my better performing videos. Yeah, well you missed one. Ow! What's this? Duke Nukem Advance? They put you on the GBA? How? Why don't you play it and find out? That's your job, after all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta make plans for Duke Nukem the Movie. Duke the Movie? You serious? Who's playing you? Randy Savage. But he's dead. Oh. So Duke Nukem Advance is one of the lesser known Dukey Nukies. I actually completely forgot it even existed back when I made my The Other Duke Nukem Games video. And that's not the only one I forgot either. There was apparently a Game Boy Color Duke that was a side-scroller like the games before Duke 3D. Not much to say about that, but Duke Nukem Advance is a very interesting game with a lot to unpack about it. Enough so that I decided it needs its own video. I'm singling it out and drawing attention to it. Look at it! You see that? You know what it is? It's a first-person shooter on the GBA, fully 3D. Well, about as 3D as the build engine was. But this ain't no build engine, no, no. This is the Southpaw engine made by Take-Two. This engine was made from the ground up to run good on a GBA. Just like the engines in a Geo Metro are built from the ground up to accelerate to 55 miles an hour. You may have to hold the pedal to the floor and go down an incline, but it will do it eventually. I'm not a car channel, though I wish I was sometime. I would love to tell y'all about this piece of shit I bought. Anyway, Duke Nukem Advance was made in 2002 by Taurus Games, which has actually made more than one FPS on the GBA. They made a not bad at all conversion of Doom 2 and made it run on the Southpaw engine and was actually more faithful to the original than the port of Doom 1, which was made by a different company. They also made a game called Ice 9, which has nothing to do with Joe Satriani's song and was apparently a movie licensed game, but the movie never came out, so they made it its own thing. It's a long story for what is a pretty shit game. <laughs> Two out of three good GBA FPSs ain't bad, though. You can't expect perfection every time. Like how I sometimes make a completely shit video that no one ends up watching. Sometimes you just suck. And Taurus Games has done a fair bit of sucking. Just look at this game lineup. Do these sound like good games? Also, wow, they made those Scooby-Doo games I reviewed that had the weird art style. If you want to know how those were, you can watch my second video on Scooby-Doo games. So Duke Advance is actually not a port of Duke 3D. It's its own game, though it does share some assets from Duke 3D like the enemy sprites. The graphics are surprisingly okay for something running on a Nintendo handheld. It runs, I'd say about... 15 FPS at that. It fluctuates up and down. If you have lots of enemies on screen, it can really slow to a crawl. But considering this is running on a console that's known for side-scrollers, isometric garbage, and Super Nintendo ports, you really can't complain. It's Duke Nukem on the go, and it was the only place to get this game until it got ported to whatever the hell this thing is. So Duke gets sent to Area 51 to kill some alien bastards, and while there, he finds out they're breeding a new species of alien there, and it's his new mission to destroy them all. You got the standard fare for enemies in Duke Advantage, you got the classic pig cops, assault troopers, octobrains, but you also have a literal fucking gray, just straight up Marcianito. And you better kill these guys because they can revive dead enemies. Luckily, you can kill them in like one or two hits with a shotgun. It's like a shitty arch vial. Now you're probably wondering, how do you control this game? Well, it's the old school one stick movement. Left and right turns you left and right. You can't look up or down as far as I know. And you use L and R to strafe. It sounds weird, but I got accustomed to it really quick. I mostly use strafing for the boss battles. If you don't dig that control stream... Control stream? Yeah, check out my control stream. I can piss out loop the loops. If you don't dig that control scheme, they have a few you can try out. Selecting weapons is kind of aggravating to do. You have to hold select and press left or right, and there's no non-awkward way to do that. If they would have made it to where you hold select and press L and R, that would have been better. Or hey, how about just push select and change your weapon? You don't have to make it into something you have to switch your hands around to do. It's like having to jerk off with your non-dominant hand. It feels like a stranger's doing it, and I don't know how I feel about that. Though I guess you could make a claw out of your index finger and use it on the D-pad. Still, it means you have to change your hand position. And you're asking me to do that during an intense fight? How about I ask you to solve a Rubik's Cube with boxing gloves on while someone shoots you with a BB gun? There's a lot of backtracking in this game, but I guess I can't complain. There's backtracking in Duke 3D. And the gameplay in this is 
pretty much the same old stuff. You come across locked doors that need a key card. Damn, I need a key card. You run around until you find a key card. Damn, I found a key card. You start off with a pistol, but you can kill pig cops to get a shotgun. Damn, I found a shotgun. You can even get pipe bombs in this game. Damn, I... Will you shut up, Gianni? Uh, yeah, sorry. For the most part, the weapons are the normal stuff you would find in a Dookie Nuki game. The freeze gun is here, the shrink ray is here, and the wonderful RPG. However, in Instead of the Ripper, they gave you an MP5. Why? What was wrong with the Ripper? And it has that Hollywood silencer sound effect. God, that gets annoying quick. The Enforcer enemy has that sound effect too. I know I'm making a big deal out of a sound effect, but that's not fun to listen to. The MP5 isn't even suppressed. It makes no sense. And yes, I know they made a silenced MP5, but this ain't it. And this ain't it metaphorically either. This ain't it. What's bad is it's one of the better weapons to use and you get lots of ammo for it. So you find yourself using it a lot. It's just more of that stupid noise to listen to. You know what? I'm going to make my own MP5 sound effect. <laughs> You laugh, but when 3D Realms calls me up wanting me to do sound design, we'll see who's laughing. Oh, I almost forgot. There's actually another weapon they added. A quad barrel shotgun. If shot up close, it can kill lots of things in one hit. I actually didn't use it all that much because God, it chews through ammo. You know what? I love that a lot of indie boomer shooters are actually going to quad shotguns now. Double barrel, old news. Triple barrel, fuck out of here. It's time for quad barrel, bitches. What's next, a six barrel? At that point, your gun is more barrel than gun. Hope you got money for ammo, because I certainly don't. I probably would have some money if I would have taken that Raycon deal. You know what they wanted me to do? They wanted me to make a whole dedicated video where I just review Raycons, and I said, fuck you, I'm not a sellout. I'm not losing the respect of my fans just to make a little money. Now, if you want me to do a sponsor spot in a video, that's different. Hey, Raycon, hit me up again. Ammo's expensive. But at any rate, the first boss you fight runs around in a circle and throws missiles at you. All you gotta do is strafe and not get hit, and you can take this guy out pretty easily. You learn from this boss that Area 51 was just the tip of the iceberg. There's tons more alien bastards being bred in Egypt. Damn, this is the second game I've reviewed that has an Egypt level. The last one was JoJo on the Super Famicom. I wonder what Duke Nukem's stand would be. Megadeth? Pantera? Oh, I know. Big balls. You can see him use it in balls of Steel Ball Run. The Egypt levels aren't too bad. It's very yellow, though. But I guess that's par for the course with an Egypt level. With the graphics, you look like you're swimming around in cheesy chicken. You ever had that? It's good. Wish I had some right now instead of the dollar store chicken nuggets that don't heat up quite evenly. God, I need a new stove. You guys really need to join my Patreon so I can get a new stove. Maybe I can make a new pledge tier. $50 and I'll come to your house and... Admire your golf ball collection. So after we leave Egypt without fighting an evil vampire, we go to the Sydney Opera House in Australia, home of Dank Pods and Mighty Car Mods, which both end in odds. What are the odds? That was stupid, I'm sorry. This was the first time in the game where I got lost. There's this one level that has two stages, like literal theater stages, side by side, and after I combed through the whole entire level and even found all the secrets, I had no idea where I was supposed to go. You know what it was? This door right here that I passed by at least eight times. Looks like I'm the one who's a goober head. It's people like me doing dumb shit like that that are the reasons we have maps, radars, and markers in modern games now. It's to the point just about have to put a big arrow with a sign that says, Go here, dumbass. Luckily, there's only a couple of maps in this game that are confusing. But when you get to them, you'll know. Speaking of the map, there's a map in the game but the frame rate on it is so bad you can barely use it. I don't know what's going on. It's like the frame rate on the map map is <laughs> less than the actual map. What the fuck? So Duke finds out from an informant that the aliens are working on a doomsday device and it's somewhere in the opera house. When you find the device, you have to turn off a bunch of switches. Well, you do that and then you take the fight to the aliens directly by teleporting to their mothership. Now this is where the game starts getting hard. They start throwing way more enemies at you. Enough so that you might start getting low on ammo here and there. The worst level of the whole game, though, is one where the mission objective is, and I quote, conserve your ammo. You don't actually have to do that, but they talk like the idea of this level is to run past all of the aliens and get through the level as fast as possible. Well, guess what? You're gonna die if you do that. In fact, you're going to die multiple times if you do that. 
So instead of doing what the game tells you, mow those fuckers down because you're Duke Nukem and all aliens have to die. Sayonara, E.T. This is another level I got stuck at because there's this one door where the texture of it is the same color as the wall and it looks like part of the wall and I passed by it multiple times not realizing it was a door. I can imagine this would have been a lot worse playing on a little unlit GBA screen because not everyone had those fancy late model SPs with the backlight. Some of us had to squint or play next to a lamp and then your parents catch you doing that when you're supposed to be asleep because you got school tomorrow. Then you either get a stern talking to from your parents or in my case, they get the belt. In the last levels of the game, you find out that your informant, whose name is Jenny, has clones of herself, and they're all being held captive by the alien bastards. And that turns Duke into Overdrive, because now he has to kill aliens and save the babes. Now it really is a Duke Nukem game. Or at least Duke Nukem 64, and that one you could save the babes. Man, the N64 had a lot of boomer shooters on it. Duke, Doom, Quake, Quake 2, Hexen, and then it had its own exclusive stuff on top of that. Maybe I should do a video on the boom shoots on the N64, but only if you guys want it. Do you? Tell me. In the comments. They help the algorithm! You know what's funny? I don't know if that's actually true. And I've seen some videos that say the only thing that helps the algorithm is your title and your thumbnail. What is the secret sauce? The formula, SpongeBob! Scott the Waz! What have I gotta do to be better than you? Oh, that rhyme. I bet it's that blue outline. Okay, fine. I'll have a green one. Haha! <laughs> -ha! Now we wait on the numbers to go up. Yes! Yes! Now we just wait on the sponsorships and the collaborations to roll in. But in the meantime, last level, or at least it seems like it, you gotta turn off a whole bunch of switches again to make the reactor core of the spaceship melt down. And after you do that, you fight the final boss, Zablibaborb. I made that up, I don't know his name. Final boss is pretty underwhelming, really. All you do is strafe to the left or the right and unload on him with everything you got and just don't get hit. There's no puzzle to solve, no strategy, no weak point, just mow him down. Fair enough. A simplistic boss fight can be good, but when it's the last one in the game, I kind of expect more. Well, too late to complain about it now because he's dead. But oh shit, the ship is blowing up! You better get your ass out of there before you turn into bite-sized duke chunks! The time limit is pretty forgiving and gives you enough time to fight bad guys while you zoom your ass through this exploding map. So Duke makes it out and teleports back home and he celebrates the only way he knows how. Hail to the king indeed. So that's Duke Nukem Advance on the GBA. So what are my afterthoughts? Well, honestly, I think the game was good, especially for what it was. I was expecting this to be trash, and I was pleasantly surprised how decent it was. It's not the greatest game in the world, oh no, far from it, but I enjoyed my time with it. It did what it set out to do, put Dookie Nookie on the GBA. You know, I was curious what people thought of it when it came out, and here's what I found. Frank Provo on GameSpot reviewed it in 2002 and said it was solid enough and gave it a 7.5 out of 10. I'll link his review if you want to read it. Craig Harris's review on IGN from the same year goes into a few things I didn't touch, like the fact this game has multiplayer with up to four-player deathmatch. I bet that would have been interesting. He gave the game a glowing nine. I also found some info on it from back on the 3D Realms' Legacy website, where IGN, as well as some people from E3, called it the best FPS on the GBA. To be fair, though, it didn't have that much competition at the time. I mean, there was a bad port of Wolfenstein, a mediocre port of Doom, and two other games nobody gave a shit about. I've already forgotten their names. Also of note is the person who posted all of this stuff on the website. It's Joe Siegler, a kind of background character in 3D Realms and Apogee staff who actually worked on a big part of Rise of the Triad. I just thought that was interesting. I follow him on Twitter, and he has a Black Sabbath fan club. How cool is that? Well, anyway, it looks like people really liked it back then, and it still holds up today, even if the graphics and the frame rate really don't. I'm not a big graphics guy anyway, so a good game's a good game to me. Maybe somebody will remake the maps in the build engine someday or something, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. I've tried. I can't do it. The last time I did it is when I wanted Jazz Jackrabbit in Fortnite. I almost died! They'll never do it, the cowards! You know what sucks, though? This hasn't been re-released or remastered on some current console. It'd be cool if they put this on Switch Online or something. What? What the fuck is an Evercade?